Good morning and welcome. My name is Richard Wesley and it's my privilege to be the pastor here at St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church. I'm real excited that you're with us today. Now, I have an announcement that I want to make. We are United Methodists, and as United Methodists in the Tennessee Conference, we are in that time frame when the bishop uh, begins that appointment process and we begin to announce to our churches who will be the pastor next year. I've been at St. Bethlehem for nine years, and this will be my last year here. The appointment process, we're, we're announcing uh, to the congregation, the bishop is moving me, but the bishop is bringing in Reverend Corey Alexander Willett. She is a young clergy, and I am really excited about the potential that she brings for the future of the St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church. Now, her first Sunday here will be June the 27th, which means that June the 20th will be my last Sunday here. So you're, you're uh, going to be part of a great transformation for St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church. It's going to be exciting. God's going to do some great, great things. Now, today, maybe appropriately, the topic today is fear. You know, change, even when it is for good and better, is still a fearful time for a lot of us. Um, so today we're going to look at the topic fear. Our lesson this morning is found in the Gospel of Luke. Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified, and they thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I, myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have, and when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, the words of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. What do you fear? You know, I've heard 
most of my life that the number one fear is the fear of public speaking. And maybe this was even true at one time, but times have changed and folks have found more to be frightened of than speaking in front of others. Now, just prior to the pandemic uh, a year ago, surveys suggested America's number one fear was corrupt government officials. In fact, the top 16 fears were associated with politicians and the decisions they make. The fear of public speaking didn't even make the top 48 in Americans' fear. Fears have shifted over the past year of pandemic and political unrest, but for our purposes and focus today, let's simply agree that we are living in a time that many find frightening. So a question to help frame today's focus might be, does scripture have anything to offer us on this topic of fear. This morning's story that you just heard tells us the disciples were afraid. Now, the Roman government had arrested and executed Jesus as a political enemy of the mighty Roman Empire, the superpower of the day. And it wasn't unusual for Rome to then arrest and execute the second line followers or leaders in any kind of an uprising. And so these disciples, these followers of Jesus have a reason to be afraid. They might be facing death themselves. But in their fear, Jesus showed up and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and terrified. And Luke tells us that they thought they were seeing a ghost. And just for those of you who like such things, fear of ghosts doesn't even make the top 48 in the American fear list. However, 7% of you are afraid of ghosts. And more Democrats are afraid of ghosts than Republicans. So, fear of ghosts. And by the way, fear of ghosts creeps in just a shade above the fear of clowns. Well, anyway, back to our story. In their fear, the disciples' fear, Jesus shows up. And he says to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified, and they thought they were seeing a ghost. And Jesus said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? That's a good question for today. Why are you frightened? Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Have you ever noticed how fear can so frequently lead to doubt? You know, when a local church becomes filled with doubt, doubt about its future, it's probably followed an intense period of anxiety laden fear. That's why relationship tools like Myers-Briggs or Healthy Congregations or the Intercultural Development Inventory are so important in congregational longevity. But Jesus in our story shows up in the midst of their logical fear. They had reason to be afraid. In the midst of their logical fear, Jesus shows up and asks, 
Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? So again, let me ask you, what frightens you? Seemingly, the number one fear of Americans today is the fear of a corrupt government or at least corrupt government officials. Is that what most frightens you? Or is it the state of American health care, pollution? Are your fears financial, not having enough money for the future? Or too many medical bills? Those are fears that over half of Americans experience. But what frightens you? Yeah, I believe that what was true of those first believers 2,000 years ago is still true for us today. Jesus stands in the midst of us today and says, Peace be with you. Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? From all external circumstances, those first believers had reason to be afraid. That's true of us today as well. It's true of your fears. If you look at all of the items that Americans are afraid of, you have a good reason to fear. If you're looking through the eyes of being an American citizen. And maybe that's the problem. We like to be American first, Christian second. We have placed our confidence in our own way of living and life when what we as believers and followers of Jesus are called to do is to place our confidence and our hope in Jesus. Our story said, then Jesus said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Governments have come and gone. Politicians have gained and lost power. World economies and great fortunes have been gained and lost. But the church, the church of Jesus Christ remains. The church remains. The church, capital C. What about local churches? Well, every year at annual conference, we hear the list of church congregations in our own conference that have closed. Every year at annual conference and especially four years at the general conference decisions are made that that could have an effect on our local congregation's church life you st bethlehem are facing a pastoral change here in a couple of months so what frightens you now, let me even be more specific for the community called St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church. For over 20 years, you have been in decline in Sunday attendance. And no one in any of our churches 
knows what the end effect of the pandemic will be when it comes to the health and longevity of local congregations. Where will this congregation be in the next 20 years? St. Bethlehem's physical location is in one of the best possible areas for genuinely making a difference in people's lives. Let me repeat that. The physical location of St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church is located in one of the best possible areas for genuinely making a difference in people's lives. But what will we do with, the, with that potential that God has trusted us with? I believe God offers the solution to our fear. In today's story, Jesus opened their eyes to the potential that they had right there in the first century Roman Empire. Everything around them suggested that they were, they were participating in a losing cause. Jesus had been crucified. There was a chance that Rome could turn against the followers of Jesus. The world looked dangerous and bleak. Everything around them suggested that they were involved in a losing cause. And yet, here we are today, 2,000 years later, part of that church that began then. And today, we are facing our own fears. But St. Bethlehem, look at what God has blessed you with. You have a healthy, vibrant preschool with a lot of young adult families who already have a connection to St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church. During the week, you give home base to a lot of scouts. A lot of young families are already connected through the scouts and their children to the St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church. You have a soccer field that every week their soccer teams from our local schools use that field for practice and their parents are there. You already have a connection to the parents and those kids who use the soccer field of St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church every single week during the school year. NA meets in these facilities and you already have a good, healthy connection with young adults, single and married, who are already connected to St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church. And in a denomination with a graying clergy, I'm one of those graying clergy, in a denomination with a graying clergy, you have been blessed with an appointment starting in two months with a young pastor. A young pastor. I'm excited about the possibilities God is presenting to you right now. Let us pray. Truly, holy, gracious are you, O God of our right. You lift up the light of your countenance upon us and you put joy into our hearts. We come this day to sing our songs of praise to your holy name. You have called us to have righteous anger but to avoid committing sin. Jesus came without sin to take away our sin. Yet we persist in breaking your law. Because we choose to live outside your law, we choose also to break our communion with you. Forgive us our waywardness and bring us anew to be your children. 
so that all we do might be righteous in your sight. You have sent witnesses in all ages to proclaim the good news of the new Christ and new life in Christ. As you have empowered them to give testimony by the Holy Spirit, so clothe us with power from on high that we may proclaim the one name under heaven given for salvation, that of Christ the Lord. Jesus, after he rose, came to calm those who were frightened. So come now to give rest to those facing the fear of disease and brokenness. In your mercy, heal them. O oh God who hears us when we call, hear us now and make us dwell in safety. For we pray this in the name of Christ the Lord. Please join me in praying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church is positioned to make a positive difference in the lives of many. Your church leaders, your leadership team is a cohesive, uh, forward-looking, positive uh, group of leaders and they work well together. They have in their hearts a vision of what this church can grow to be. Your new pastor who will be coming in, in in a couple of months is a young adult who was raised not only in the United Methodist Church, but both of her parents are clergy. So she's not just a preacher's kid, she's a preacher's and preacher's kid. <laughs> I was a preacher's kid, my dad was a pastor, her mom and her dad are pastors. She understands communities of faith. I'm excited for you. I'm excited for the potential 
I know God is going to do great and mighty and wonderful things as you work together with your new pastor in the vision that God has called for the St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church. We'll see you next time.